And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Undaunted Normandy. Now this game has been actually reviewed on the Dice Tower before, not by myself, and it's been talked about quite a bit. Uh, but I wanted to take a look at it for a couple reasons. One, I'm a big fan of light war games, which this certainly is. I've heard a ton of good stuff about it. And I have the sequel to it that I wanted to play, but before I played that, I figured it would make more sense to play the original. Undaunted Normandy is a game that is covering World War II and the battles between the Allies and the Germans. And it does so using a mechanism of deck building. In this game, you start with a small deck of cards, and you can make that deck bigger or smaller as the game goes by. You will use those cards to activate units on the board where you run around and try to accomplish objectives. For more details, stay tuned. When you play a game of this, you're going to be taking a look at the scenario book and picking a scenario in it. So let's say, for example here, we'll pick scenario three. Scenario three shows you what tiles, that there's 18 different tiles, which side of those tiles you need, and how to set up the board, and lo and behold, here we have it. It will also, the scenario book will show you what cards you need. If it shows it in a black circle, that card is going to be put into your starting deck. Otherwise, they go into supplies. So here, next to the board, I have all the German cards in supplies. You also have your units placed in the board. I got Rifleman A and B and Scouts A and B here on the board. What players are doing uh, is trying to accomplish the goals of each scenario. In this particular scenario, you want to have a control marker in six control point values. There's a, several ones. You'll see there's a two up there in the corner. So the first person to control six is going to win the game. Each player is going to shuffle their deck and the game begins. The first thing a player will do on their turn is from their deck, each player is going to draw four cards. You're going to look at these four cards and you're going to pick one of them to be your initiative card. Each player is going to play one of these, you'll reveal them, and whoever played the highest initiative marker is going to get the initiative and go first. If it's a tie, the person with the marker will retain control over that. These cards are discarded, so if you want to use a card for its initiative, you won't get the benefit of the card. So the platoon sergeant here, who is possibly the best card in the game, you can use it, you'll probably win initiative, but then you won't be able to use the card. Then in initiative order, each person's going to play their three different cards. They're either going to play it and activate that card, doing one of the actions on the card. Cards will have two, three, four different actions that you can pick between. Um, you can also hunker down with a card, which just basically means put it back in your supply. Possibly you're not using that soldier, you want to hone your deck down, that soldier's no longer out there, whatever it might be. So each card you do that with, and in fact, if you get these Fog of War cards, you'll start with a couple in your deck, and as the game goes by, you'll get more and more of them in your deck. You really can't do anything with these. You can use them for initiative. Of course, there are only a one there. And there are other cards that let you remove them from the game, but basically you can't play those as you draw them. Fortunately, here in my starting hand, I drew some cards that I can use. Uh, Rifleman A, Rifleman B, and the Platoon Sergeant. Let's take a look at some of the basic commands. We have Move. Whenever you move, this is move one, it means I can move, move Rifleman A1. You can move to that many spaces, but you can only move to areas that have been scouted or that you control. Now, fortunately, you have these scouts, and scouts let you move that many spaces. A scout here can move two spaces. They don't need to have scouted a space, and each area that they move into, you can put a scouting marker there, although you'll also take a Fog of War card and stick that in your discard pile from then on out. Then we have the bolster action. Now on this squad leader, he can only bolster B cards, two B cards, or the platoon sergeant can bolster three cards. That means you're adding more cards to your deck. So you just pick one of the cards here, and so bolster, let's say I play this squad leader for bolster 2B, I could take another B rifleman and a B machine gunner. 
Now in this particular scenario, I don't have a machine gunner on the board. That means the first time I play the machine gunner, I'm going to place him at a spawn point. There are various spawn points on the board. In this scenario, this just all units start in a certain spot. But I could also have all A units start in a certain spot, all B units start in a certain spot. And so the first time I play a machine gunner card, I'll just put that out in the, that spot. Also, if you have units removed from the board, uh, this is a way to bring them back again at the spawn points. There's a lot of other different things on these different cards that you can do. There's recon on the scouts, which lets you get rid of the fog of war. But there's also a lot of shooting that's going to happen, and that's what the attacks are for. The riflemen have them, the machine gunners have them. You can even suppress, which is not as good as attacking, but can basically flip over the opponent, and they have to spend a card to flip them back because they're suppressed, but it gives you more dice. When you attack somebody else on the board, so let's say this rifleman wants to attack these scouts here. So when that happens, you're going to roll a certain number of dice. So in this case, it would be one die. You're going to look at the scout's defense. It's a five. You'll add the defense of the tile they're in. Oh boy, they're standing in the open fields. So it's just a five. And then you'll add one for each distance that they are away. You'll then roll the die, trying to roll that number or higher. If you have multiple dice, like the machine gunner could roll two, you would take one of the dice. If any of the dice is higher than that number, you've hit them. And a zero or a 10 is always a success, no matter how hard it is to hit the opponent. When you hit the opponent, they must lose a card permanently. It comes out of the game. And the cards are going to come from a specific order. They have to lose the card from their hand if they have it, otherwise from their discard pile. If they don't have one in the discard pile, they lose it from their deck. And if they don't have one in their deck, then they're going to remove the unit from the board. And so you are going to be consistently shooting at your opponents so that you can get rid of these cards so that they can no longer use that opponent and eventually eliminate that, that particular character from the game. When your turn's done, you'll take all your cards that you've played from your play area, shuffle them, and you'll keep drawing. When your pile, draw pile runs out, you'll take your discard pile, shuffle it, and make a new draw pile uh, to pull from. And you'll keep doing this until someone accomplishes the mission. It's also possible for someone to be pinned down. In which case, they have, that means they have no riflemen combat counters on the board. When that happens, you're pinned down. And if both people are pinned down, the scenario will tell you what happens. In this case, whoever has the most objective points wins, which gives the allies kind of advantage because they start with this two objective points in this particular scenario. The game comes with 12 different scenarios. Each scenario adds new units. You can see by the time we get to the end here, we have squad leaders A, B, and C, riflemen A, B, and C, scout A, B, and C, machine gunners A, B, and C, mortars, snipers, and so on. Um, and then you can, of course, play these over and over and over again. I'm pretty happy with the components of this game overall. I really like the art on these, and it is interesting that even amongst uh, two people that are the same, so here we have uh, two scouts. Now these are essentially the same artwork, but they're slightly different because this guy's name is John and this guy's name is Joseph. So I like that a lot. I, I think the art works well. I also think all these symbols and things are neat. The move, attack, control, all that stuff is very clearly laid out. I would have not been opposed to them putting what all that stuff does here in the back. You do know what it does. I mean, it's here in the, in the inside back, the quick reference. But this is harder to hold open than on the back or a reference card. It's not, I mean, once you play the game, you'll remember what all these things do. I just wish, again, they had given a reference card to each person. All these tiles, though, that are used in the game are double-sided. And it's really easy to set these things up and play. And the counters themselves are very clear and easy to tell. The game is not complex at all, really, in the rules explanation, which is very well done. And the whole thing has a really good look to it. Undaunted had a hard task coming in for me playing it, just because the hype was so high on it, and I was, I was not sure what to expect. So my first game of it kind of took me aback. First of all, the scenario one in here can end really quick. Uh, if, 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 if you're not careful as one of the sides, it can end really quickly. And how this game plays 
feels very different than other games. You know, I'm just used to having troops on the board, you roll some dice, or you look at charts, or what have you. That's not how this game plays. Instead, this game almost plays out like an intricate dance, where you have this deck of cards, and you're using that deck to uh, move a few units around the board to accomplish your goals. In the midst of that, there's some dice rolling, which I'm gonna quick take a quick detour here. The dice rolling in this game, I don't know. It's the one thing about the game that just isn't settling right with me, which is weird since this show is called The Dice Tower, since I like rolling dice a lot, and I especially like rolling 10-sided dice. And yet, sometimes in this game, they just don't roll your way. Now, I know that happens in lots of games, but here in this game, which occasionally can feel like a knife fight in a, in a phone booth, a phone booth's a place where people used to make phone calls for those of you who are very young. Um, it feels like that, and because of that, a missed die roll can feel pretty potent, or sometimes a lucky die roll can feel pretty potent on the other side. Now that being said, the way this game handles casualties I think is really well done. So this interesting back and forth mechanism here has that weird dice rolling, and then the other weird thing is it's I get the general theming of the game, but losing a card from your hand and then or and then discard pile and then draw pile and then unit is a thematic push that sometimes strains my credulity. However, I do understand from a mechanism standpoint, it works really well. So I already said I like the components for this game, and I like the simplicity. I think the rule book's great, and Osprey just does a fantastic job on these things. I mean, they've been working on books about war and stuff like that for years, so they know what they're talking about, and the game is really well designed. And so for me, jumping into it, I just had to kind of reassess my thinking. This was a very different feel to a game, and I think for many people it will be. I think that this game does a good job at covering a small tactical battle. Most war games kind of pull out a more macro lens, looking at the whole war or battle from a very far away perspective. This gets you down and dirty with these people. It also makes you use your units differently. Scouts aren't there to fight. They're there to, well, well scout, you know, and to get the area covered quickly so that your riflemen and snipers and machine gunners can go around and do their job. You have your leaders, which you need to get more cards in your deck, and it seems like in this game, every decision you make, which you can play the game pretty quickly, but every decision has a level of thought and care put into it that I just wasn't expecting. So I, I do enjoy this game. I want to be clear on that. I think it is fun and entertaining. But it's, it's intriguing to me, the level of thought required for this game seems to be more than, say, for a, another game in this genre, Memoir 44. And I don't know that I like this better than Memoir 44. Now, again, I know they're very different games. Memoir 44, you have lots of toy soldiers. You go, you roll dice, you fight back and forth. I love that game. This game I like a lot also, but it hasn't reached that point for me yet. Now, perhaps it will. Perhaps the more I play, this is certainly a game I can look at and I can appreciate that this is a unique, pretty cool thing. This is one of the most unique games I've played in a long time. And it reminds me of when we see other groundbreaking mechanisms in a game, that deck building is definitely a groundbreaking mechanism, used in a completely different way. I mean, Martin Wallace started doing this a bit in a few of his games, but I think this does it in a more effective interesting way. So I'm not sure the audience for this game in particular. I think you need to like war games in general because that theme is certainly ever present here. You might dislike deck building, but I don't know that that should chase you away from this game because it's not a game where you're constantly shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. You'll shuffle through the pile a few times, but it's more about what card to play at what time and for what action. That whole picking an initiative each time what card am I not going to use this turn? Is my initiative going to be higher? Because initiative in this game can be critical. Being able to shoot first is a big deal. But to give up one of my best cards to do so is a, is a gut-wrenching punch to me. And so I like that. I think this is a solid game. It is certainly a game that as time goes by 
and as I play the new desert uh, game version of this, my rating I suspect will go up. And uh, but at this time, it's still a game that I think is a lot of fun. Certainly one that I am extremely impressed with. And while I, when I come out of it, I find myself thinking about the game more than the fun, which is a weird phraseology, but I don't know how else to describe how I feel. When I look back, I'm like, that was some interesting stuff going on in that game. While other games I come out, and I'm like, whoa! And I'm not necessarily with this one. But that's not a bad thing either. And so I'm super glad this game exists, and I'm very much intrigued to try more of it. Hopefully, that's enough to let you know if you're interested in it or not. But that's Undaunted Normandy. I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment approved. <laughs>